Hi everyone and welcome to Fitness, Health and Science. This video is part of the Energy Metabolism series, and today we will be talking about oxidative phosphorylation, which includes the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. Oxidative phosphorylation involves the final stages of the metabolic processes to transform the food in energy, in the form of ATP. In order to understand the electron transport chain better, it is important that you are familiar with the other metabolic pathways. We have uploaded in this channel different videos about these topics, and you are welcome to watch them. In a previous video, we have discussed that during the Krebs cycle, acetyl-CoA is utilized to generate NADH and FADH2, which subsequently are used in a set of redox reactions that transfer electrons in the electron transport chain to generate large amounts of ATP. In today's video, we'll be discussing in details the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis, and you'll understand everything that you need to know about these topics. Oxidative phosphorylation comprises the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis, which occur in the mitochondria. Specifically, in the inner membrane, the inner membrane space, which is the space between the inner and outer membrane and the mitochondrial matrix. Now, as we can see, along this inner mitochondrial membrane are presented a series of complexes, numbered here from 1 to 5. The latter complex is also known as ATP synthase. In addition to the five complexes, are present coenzyme Q and cytochrome C, which do not act as complexes, but they are needed, and are embedded in this area of the electron transport chain. During the various stages of the electron transport chain, the electrons get shuffled from one complex to the other to generate a proton gradient, which is utilized by ATP synthase to produce massive amounts of ATP. Now, let's see how these processes work, in a step-by-step -step fashion. In the mitochondrial matrix are present protons. And NADH, produced in the DCA cycle, approaches complex 1 and donates its proton and its electrons becoming NAD+. As a result of the electron donated, complex 1 becomes supercharged with energy, which is utilized to pump the proton from the mitochondrial matrix into the inner membrane space. Through this process more and more protons are pumped from the mitochondrial matrix into the inner membrane space. Consequently, a proton gradient between the inner membrane space and mitochondrial matrix begins to form. Subsequently, Complex 1 will pass its electrons to CoQ. At this point FADH2, which was produced in the TCA cycle, approaches complex 2 and donates its electrons and turns into FAD. However, complex 2 cannot become supercharged, and cannot pump protons from the mitochondrial matrix into the inner membrane space. At this point, the electron from complex 2 gets passed to CoQ. It is important to note that NADH only works at complex 1 while FADH2 only works at complex 2, and that CoQ accepts electrons from both complex 1 and complex 2. Now, at this point, electrons from CoQ are passed to complex 3, which gets supercharged and creates sufficient energy potential to pump a proton from the mitochondrial matrix to the inner membrane space, helping to increase the proton gradient. Subsequently, complex 3 will pass its electrons on to cytochrome C, which in turn passes the electrons to complex 4. As a result of receive the electrons, complex 4 gets supercharged and uses the energy gain to pump yet more protons from the mitochondrial matrix into the inner membrane space, increasing the proton gradient further. At this point, Complex 4 passes the electrons to oxygen, which is the final electron acceptor. After receiving the electrons, oxygen splits into two oxygen ions, and then protons are added, forming two water molecules. This represents the final stage of the electron transport chain. Now, let's pose for a second and keep the big picture in mind. As a result of electrons being passed on between the various complexes and protons being pumped. A huge proton concentration gradient between the inner membrane space and the mitochondrial matrix is created. 
you should also consider that protons are positively charged. And for this reason they repel each other. Because there is a higher number of protons present in the inner membrane space, compared with the number of protons present in the mitochondrial matrix. Consequently, the repelling force within the inner membrane space is greater. Therefore, because of the greater electrochemical concentration gradient, the protons want to move from the inner membrane space to the mitochondrial matrix. This proton gradient is used by ADP synthase to generate large amounts of ATP, by adding a phosphate group to the ADP molecule, in the chemiosmosis process. The chemiosmosis process occurs as follows. Protons want to move from the inner membrane space, which is an area of higher protons concentration, to the mitochondrial matrix, that is an area of lower protons concentration. ADP comes along and wants to turn into ATP. But ATP is a higher energy molecule, and as a result, energy is needed to catalyze the conversion of ADP to ATP. This energy is provided by the protons, which is harnessed by ADP synthase. As the protons flow down the concentration gradient, through the ATP synthase, the energy input is utilized to catalyze ADP to ATP. Once the protons reach the mitochondrial matrix, they are ready to be pumped back to the inner membrane space, in a continuous cycle. ATP synthesis is essential for all living organisms, including humans. This extraordinary molecule is considered the energy currency of cells. ATP is constantly broken down to ADP and the energy released is utilized to power muscle contraction, nerve impulse propagation, and myriad of biological processes. Ok guys, let's put the whole thing together, and summarize the key points. These are the key points. 1. Oxidative phosphorylation comprises the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. 2. The electron transport chain includes various processes during which electrons and protons, donated by NADH and FADH2, are used to create a proton gradient between the inner membrane space and the mitochondrial matrix. In the final stages of the electron transport chain, complex 4 passes its electrons to oxygen, and then protons are added forming two water molecules. This represents the final stage of the electron transport chain. 3. Protons want to move down the electrochemical gradient, from the inner membrane space to the mitochondrial matrix. The energy provided by the flow of these protons is used by ADP synthase to generate large amounts of ATP, in the chemiosmosis process. Four. Once the protons reach the mitochondrial matrix, they are ready to be pumped back to the inner membrane space, in a continuous cycle. 5. ATP resynthesis is needed to power a myriad of physiological processes, and is essential for all living organisms, including humans. This concludes today's video about oxidative phosphorylation. Please write your comments down below and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.